Now we're back in our palm.xml of our introductory Spring Boot application. As I promised before, I'm going to talk about line 5 to line 10. By adding line 5 to line 10, our palm now has a parent palm, Spring Boot starter parent. The Spring Boot starter parent is a special starter project provided by the Spring Boot team. It provides common and sensible defaults for our own application and a complete dependency tree to quickly build our own Spring Boot project. So let's click into this artifact. So press Command. And when I move the cursor over, as you can see, Maven has already downloaded this project into the local repository. Users, bingyang.m2, repositories, and so on and so forth. And by clicking it, we're viewing the palm of this project. So this is the palm XML file of this special starter project provided by Spring Boot team. And our palm is extending it or inheriting it. So let's take a look at this palm. As you can see, this palm also has a parent palm called Spring Boot dependencies. What is in there? Each release of Spring Boot provides a curated list of dependencies Spring Boot currently supports. The curated list contains all the Spring modules that you can use with Spring Boot, as well as a refined list of third-party libraries. The list is available as a standard bills of materials. So after we look at the current palm, we're going to take a look at this Spring Boot dependencies. Okay. So in this Spring Boot starter parent palm, there are many configurations, okay? default configurations. For example, uh, here, the default version of Java is 1.8, but you can override it in the child palm. In this case, we change it to 12. Also, by default, the source encoding is UTF-8. And here, there are some default settings for resources. If you remember, there is a SRC main resource right here. Okay. And you can either use .properties or .yaml, but by default, we're using application.properties. So basically, this one tells our Spring Boot project that this is where we put all the properties, the externalized properties. Okay. And there are actually more here, uh, and you don't have to understand those. Next, let's take a look at the parent of Spring Boot Starter Parent. It is called Spring Boot Dependencies. So command and press click. All right, now this list is very long. All right, so if I scroll down, as you can see here, it defines all the versions of the modules supported by Spring Boot. So for example, here we have Active MQ. My MQ is Message Queue. And Later on, we have more. We have Commons. We have Groovy. We have H2 database. We're going to use this. We have Handcrust. This is one part of a GUnit. Uh, Hibernate. And all those over in Jackson. Uh, Jakarta. And a lot. Okay. As you can see, this is a, a huge list, a curated list. All right. Now let's take a look at those. Let me scroll up a little bit. Dependencies. Okay. So this is one dependency, second one, and so on and so forth. Okay. So by having those here, doesn't mean that my project needs all of those. So think of this as a bill of materials. So basically this tells my Spring Boot project is, if you want something, like think of it as, as a menu, right? If you go to a restaurant, and here are the menus, and you don't have to order everything. But if you want to order something, what you do is, you copy, for example, let's say we're going to use this mustache. Copy and go to palm.xml. Okay, so let me collapse this so you can see it clearly. So this is our first dependency, uh, time leaf, and this is the second one. And after this, copy, paste. And remember, you do not need this version because the version is already predefined over there. Okay, then we got a problem here. It says dependency not found, okay? Because we haven't refreshed our Maven. Our Maven haven't downloaded yet. So 
We're going to open Maven here and click this refresh. As you can see here, Maven is resolving dependency. And what happened is Maven is downloading and installed locally. Now, as you can see, red is gone. And when I open dependencies, so let me drag it right here. Besides time leaf, web, and test, now I have a mustache. Okay. If I open my external libraries, you can also find mustache. Right here. Okay. This is the one just downloaded. Okay. So this jar file is pulled down from Maven 2 central repository. Well, what if I delete this? No problem. And you don't have to manually delete the jar. You only need to delete these four lines. Delete, save, and refresh. So that jar will be gone, right? And here we only have three dependencies. So that mustache one is gone. Okay. Do you have to understand all the projects? No, I don't understand half of them. Okay. But there are some important things. For example, later on, we're going to use this one. Okay. Security. Uh, we're going to use starter test. We already have this. We have used time leaf. Now look at this. By default, Tomcat is part of Spring Boot. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have realized this. When I start my Spring Boot project, I have never pointed to my local Tomcat. In other words, it is safe for me to delete my local installation of Tomcat because Spring Boot has a built-in Tomcat. So everything is out of box and you do not have to download anything. So that's the whole point of Spring Boot is boot, right? Make it start very quickly. Uh, so it's very beginner friendly because Without Spring Boot, in order to run a Spring application, you have to write a lot of XMLs, install this, install that. But in Spring Boot, it's like a one-stop solution. Okay, you start a Spring Boot project and you click run button, boom, everything's there. Okay, so in summary, in order to use Spring Boot, you must have line five to line 10. Well, you don't have to manually type them there. When you create a Spring Boot project in IntelliJ, they're automatically there. and our palm is inheriting Spring Boot Starter Parent palm. And this palm is inheriting Spring Boot dependencies. So I hope everybody knows the purpose of the three palms.